Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's lecture. Today we will see the fundamental aspects of uh, fluorescence spectroscopy. So welcome to my channel. So this is uh, Dushant Reddy uh, here to explain you the fundamental aspects of of fluorescence spectroscopy. So what exactly the fluorescence tells you? So the spelling may not be correct. You please. Uh, cross check with you or because you need to be verbally also you need to be correct so before going into uh, the fundamentals of fluorescence you need to uh, know the basic concepts of spectroscopy what exactly the spectroscopy deals with is an incidence of electromagnetic radiation so electromagnetic radiation ranges from uh, X rays to UV rays, visible rays. There are several uh, fundamental parameters. What are the electromagnetic radiation and what energy levels and what type of spectroscopy you need to use to analyze what type of compounds. One more basic question uh, various students ask me, sir, uh, what type of spectroscopy should I uh, deal with to analyze this compound? So for the thing is the the interest of the analyst is much more important in selection of the spectroscopic technique. For suppose, I want to identify the final structure of my molecule. So the, the final structure of my molecule, I cannot get the final structure by UV, IR, NMR, HPLC, GEC, LC. All these methods will never give me the final structure. The final structure of all, any compound, either protein, organic or inorganic compound, will be able to identify by X-ray crystal. That means my interest is to get the final structure. That's why I have gone to the X-ray crystallographic data. Suppose my interest is to see the neighboring, what are the neighbors? What are the proton environment on the neighbors? Then my interest will be the NMR spectroscopy. Suppose I want to learn what are the electronic effects, the, what are the electrical parameters of the molecules, though my molecule of interest will be that ESR spectroscopy. So that, that depends upon what my analysis of interest and what is my final target to analyze the molecules. That is the fundamental information you need to know before analyzing or before reading any spectroscopic data. So what happens when the electromagnetic radiation interacts with the sample? So this is the sample either in any QL. Now what happens your sample components either absorbs the electromagnetic radiation or after absorption it emits some electromagnetic radiation or it may scatter the electromagnetic radiation or it may resonate with the electromagnetic radiation. There are some different types of interaction with which the electromagnetic radiation interact with your sample. You can classify them into different types of spectroscopy that is vibrational spectroscopy, coherent spectroscopy, resonance spectroscopy, uh, UV spectroscopy, visible, IR. IR is again vibrational, you can see Raman spectroscopy, again it is a vibrational spectroscopy. So these are the fundamental techniques. So upon interaction with electromagnetic radiation, what happens is, in generally the molecules are in uh, ground energy state. So this is the energy state of your molecules at ground level. So always uh, the, there is a Boltzmann distribution of your uh, molecules that your ground state is heavily populated in comparison with your excited state. What happens when there is an electromagnetic radiation interaction with the sample, there is a uh, transition between uh, excited state to ground state. This transition, whether it, uh, whether it is by absorption, after absorption, if there is any emission of uh, any photon or any energy or any wavelength or some Sometimes you can even see if you have interaction of one photon, you will get two photon outs. So this is a fundamental information with which we are going to study the fluorescence spectroscopy. In the fluorescence spectroscopy, what happens? You have a electromagnetic radiation that is focused with either with mercury vapor lamp or tungsten lamp or xenon arc lamp. So this wavelength when falls on a sample, it excites a molecule to a higher energy state this higher energy state will return to ground state by while returning to the ground state it emits certain wavelength which which has lower energy than the incident light 
and we'll have longer wavelength and this emission process is very fast so that technique of uh, what do you say a rapid emission of wavelength of light by the sample that is spontaneous emission of light by a molecules or in a solution that is the technique is called as fluorescence spectroscopy now let us see uh, what exactly happens in the fluorescence spectroscopy before going into the uh, fluorescence spectroscopy you need to know different types of uh, states of your electronic parameters how they exist so one is your uh, singlet state okay one is your a uh, doublet state one is another one is your triplet state so there are various states of matter in the electronic configuration that is singlet ground state singlet excited state a doublet state and a triplet state sometimes you have an extra pair of electrons so that extra pair of electron is generally called as your doublet state whereas the singlet state is your ground state where you have paired of uh, your electronic levels that is paired but in the same time you have a singlet excited state where you have unpaired uh, electronic level so in triplet state you have unpaired electronic level at same spin so this is of one more thing you need to know so the spinning states that means the singlet excited state and singlet ground state that the singlet excited state and singlet ground state these both are in pairing with each other that means the total amount of excited and ground state are same whereas in the triplet state you have unpaired uh, what do you say states with same spin so this is what you need to know before studying the any of the fundamentals of fluorescence spectroscopy so in fluorescence you have a concept of called jablonski diagram here nothing else is uh, important first thing is you have a ground state these are the vibration levels by by molecules vibrate between the uh, ground state so this is a ground state population and again you have an uh, higher energy state this is s0 so you have an intermediate energy state that is s1 and again sorry uh, you have an one more energy state called as s2 so this is a uh, energy levels by which upon interaction of your electromagnetic radiation these molecules in the ground state excite to the higher energy state right so this excitation of ground state so this will call as singlet ground state will go to singlet excited state this excited state molecules return back to the ground state before they return to the ground state they go to an intermediate level that is called as intra conversion that is intra system cross intra conversion that is one element that is the vibrational transition between one level to another level and further this may go to ground state and this may release some amount of energy in terms of photon which have smaller energy than the incident rate but will have longer wavelength than your what you say your incident rate so this is the fundamental information in the fluorescence spectrum however before going into the ground state if this the energy level moves from this level to a triplet triplet excited state so the uh, again i already told you triplet excited state will have so unpaired of say spin same spin so here the triplet excited state will also reach to ground state by releasing some amount of photon so this technique of release of photon that is delayed release of photon is called as phosphorescence whereas the release of photons immediately after the internal conversion is called as fluorescence so this is called as fluorescence and there is this called as phosphorescence now the speed of which fluorescence is around 10 power minus 4 to 10 power minus 8 whereas the speed of fluorescence is about 10 power minus 8 to 10 power minus 20 that means 
the phosphorescence is delayed in terms of your fluorescence the fluorescence is very fast and rapid in your uh, molecules so here it is spontaneous emission of radiation after absorption of your electromagnetic radiation of certain wavelength the energy of excited molecules will return to ground state by releasing some amount of photon the photon released will have lower in energy in comparison to the incident rate and whereas higher wavelength now you have a question why my molecule is having uh, lower energy because in coming from the higher excited to ground state it will have collisions the collisions between the molecules will cause the what you say uh, 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 the collisions will have energy loss the collisions which cause energy loss that that's why the molecule will have lower in energy whereas larger in wavelength this is a fundamental information of your fluorescence spectroscopy this is the modified jablonski diagram to explain the fundamental information of fluorescence now let us see uh, in comparison with your uv the fluorescence spectroscopy is also very similar to your uh, uh, what do you say your uh, uv spectroscopy in the uv we have already run that it's a bill lambert's law is very uh, bill lambert's law is not applicable for concentrated solutions so that is uh, a is equal to ebc so this fundamental of uh, bill lambert's law in ultraviolet spectroscopy the way a is your absorption e is molar absorptivity b is your path length and c is your concentration here what exactly i am going to tell you is the it is a concentration dependent the always all the solution should be less than 1% so those solutions whose concentration is more than 1% will deviate the beer lambert's law that is the uv fundamental now when coming to fluorescence you have a molecule which is highly fluorescent in nature but the fluorescence the linearity of fluorescence is very well explained in dilute solutions so what what exactly the dilute solutions is so the solutions which are very dilute that is whose absorption is less than 0.05 uh, and uh, what do you say angstroms sorry absorption is 0.05 nanometers which is very less in comparison to your uh, what do you say in the uv those molecules are uh, very highly effective uh, in your uh, fluorescence spectrum where Uh, your it is linear the that is the fluorescence intensity is uh, very linear for dilute solutions so here you can see as wavelength or wave number you can take as a parameter to identify this however when you go to higher concentrations so as the concentration is if you take this graph as a uh, concentration now it is as the concentration is increased the fluorescence level goes decreased so this type of quenching of fluorescence by concentration is of two types of quenching are there let us see what exactly the quenching is so you take a molecule sorry you take a solution in your cuvette which is very dilute that's why i am showing you the cuvette as with only one molecule what happens when there is an incident light comes onto the molecule there is an absorption of uh, light as well as excitation followed by emission of photon very simple now the same one if you take a concentrated solution it's very concentrated where you have very uh, heavily polluted molecules now what happens when there is an incident light comes onto the molecule there is an excitation however the energy released photon is not released out because it is transferred to another molecule so this type of transfer of energy released is called as quenching that is quenching means quenching of your uh, any of your uh, process of the reaction now in any organic chemistry there is a process of quenching of chemical reaction suppose you do a reaction in terms of suppose you are preparing a chalcone you prepare a chalcone in the presence of aldehyde 
plus acetophenone in term in the presence of NaOH that is 10% NaOH so you expect to get H alcohol so now what happens here is uh, if you want to quench the reaction whatever the excess NaOH is there you dilute it with HCl or uh, dilute HCl or wash with cold water so this is the fundamental of quenching whereas in fluorescence what happens the fluorescence of one molecule is quenched by the dibering molecule because of heavier concentration such type of quenching is uh, is very useful in an, in reading any molecule because if you compare the fluorescence intensity of dilute and concentrated molecule sometimes the fluorescence may be same because the fluorescence of one molecule is quenched by the other molecule so the even the large concentration molecule will show lower fluorescence because of the quenching now quenching how many types of quenching is there here the quenching is of two types one is your static quenching the other one is your dynamic quenching now what happens in static quenching is the molecule in the ground state is interacted with another molecule and form complex that is any added molecule and the formed complex cannot go to the excited state and cannot give any sort of fluorescence this type of quenching is called as static quenching whereas in dynamic quenching what happens the molecule goes to the excited state but comes to ground state after interaction or collision with another molecule without emitting any radiation so there is no emission of radiation such type of uh, transitions are called as dynamic quenching that means the ground state is moving to the excited state and the excited state is returning back to the ground state without any radiation so that radiation less transmission from excited to ground state is called as dynamic quenching whereas the molecule in the ground state is quenched with another uh, molecule of uh, any additive such type of quenching which does not allow to molecule to move from ground state to excited state this is called as a static quenching this is a fundamental information you need to know uh, before uh, doing any experiment so always should ensure that the absorbance value is very very low that is less than 0.05 absorbance so that is a fundamental information you need to know before going into quenching uh, before going into fluorescence experiments now what is fluorescence quantum yield is calculated as number of of uh, number of photons emitted by number of photons absorbed so that is quantum yield you can even write as f by ab that is quantum yield is called number of fluorescent fluorescence quantum that is quantum of fluorescence emitted and by the uh, by the photons absorbed so this is the fundamental information of fluorescence quantum yield now let us see one concept called as uh, now you have a molecule which is a uh, fluorescent so that's why i am showing with you as a star when some another molecule comes and interact with this molecule what happens the molecule will lose its fluorescence so this is the fundamental information of your uh, fluorescence studies of uh, fluorescence spectroscope now let us see f0 by f that is f0 is your fluorescence molecule and f is your what you say non fluorescent that is equivalent to 1 plus k into uh, c this is a fundamental equation so so 1 plus k sv into c this is a fundamental equation to explain you the phenomena of fluorescence now the molecule which is f0 that is fluorescent when there is an uh, external molecule is added to this one there is a loss of fluorescence the loss of fluorescence is explained by stern volmer constant that is stern volmer constant of your fluorescence intensity and c is your concentration of quenching agent added so this is the fundamental information you need to know before going into any fluorescence study so this is the fundamental where 
the fluorescence of a molecule is reduced to non fluorescent molecule in the presence of a uh, chemical or a constant which is quenching the fluorescence property this is the fundamental information let us see some basic concepts of uh, fluorescence suppose if you increase the double bonds suppose you have one double bond now if you increase the number of double bonds as the number of double bonds conjugation increases as the conjugation increases what happens is the fluorescence intensity is increased that is the energy is decreased and wavelength is increased this is a fundamental information you need to know that means you have a energy gap between the excited state and the ground state this energy gap is minimum when you have your molecule is highly uh, conjugated so what happens this energy gap is minimum that means the molecular tumbling from the ground state to excited state is very fast so that's why you have a spontaneous emission of your light that technique is called as spontaneous emission of photons which are longer in wavelength lower in energy this concept is called as uh, what fluorophore what do you what do you mean by fluorophore so the fluorophore f l o u r o p h o r e that is the molecule which is responsible for the fluorescence molecule let us see some various fluorophores so we have the conjugated double bonds so uh, fluorophores so this is one fluorophore now when you increase the number of rings and number of conjugations what happens is again the fluorophoric strength increases that means the energy gap between uh, the wavelength between the wavelength the gap between the ground state and excited state is reduced and the energy of uh, absorbance is uh, they have uh, reduced and the wavelength is increased so the fluorescence intensity is increased absorption energy is decreased and wavelength is very high so that is what the emitted photon will have larger wavelength lower in energy and this molecule the energy gap between the ground state and excited state is very minimum in this molecules so what happens is again you have a fluorophore up on to the fluorophore fluorophore if you have different kinds of groups suppose assume that this is my fluorophore i have a group called as r if it is electron releasing group suppose assume that oh and nh2 this will increase the fluorescence intensity suppose if i have electron withdrawing group that is like co oh and no2 so this will decrease the fluorescence intensity so the effect of electron releasing or electron which suppose this r is an electronegative or heteroatom now the the more the electronegative the more the electron cloud is dragged out and the fluorescence will be reduced this is the fundamental information of your fluorescence studies so the main motive of the fluorescence experiments are based upon your fluorescence quantum yield and how the molecule tumbles from the ground state to excited state whether if it is faster it is in fluorescence if it is slower if it is showing phosphorescence now the if, if it is if the fluorophore is having electron releasing group then you have a high amount of fluorescence intensity the fluorophore with electron withdrawing group the fluorescence intensity is reduced now this fluorescence is ph dependent solvent dependent viscosity dependent and temperature dependent how it is dependent suppose if a molecule if a medium is polar in nature now the polar molecules interact with the fluorophore causing n2 pi star transitions more so the more the polar solvent the more the fluorescence intensity if the molecule is having high viscosity or if the molecule is having low viscosity what happens on the fluorescence intensity is also very promising studies you need to know it also affects the temperature higher the temperature the more is the molecular tumbling or lower the temperature what happens on the fluorescence intensity that is also very very important in your uh, parametric studies of your fluorescence even ph let us see the effect of ph on your fluorescence intensity so let us take one molecule 
called as NH2 that is anil aniline. Now what happens here is these are generally amines are basic in nature. Now when you increase the uh, pH that means alkaline pH will cause what happens the alkaline pH. So if you have an acidic pH, if you have a pH, so when there is increase in acidic or basic one, so the what happens is so proton donor will form a cation and proton obstructor will form an anion. So one is uh, fluorescence active, the another one is fluorescence inactive. So these are the fundamental information which you need to know. This fluorescence is also pH dependent, temperature dependent, viscosity dependent, solvent dependent, concentration dependent, as well as uh, even you also re uh, require to know that lower the concentration, the better results are reproducible. This is a fundamental information of fluorescence. Hope you all uh, enjoy my lectures. If you are happy, please subscribe and share among your friends. Thank you. We'll be coming with new lectures. This is your Dushyant Reddy.